Born in London in 86, a stash show gent named Richard Parliament. He loves to wrestle, but he loves one more thing, and goes round the world. He fights in his comments and he argues with fans. It's a problem no one understands. If there's two things he loves, it's getting at, and goes round the world. Drinking fine wine, fighting fanboys, handhelds round the world. Top Hat Gaming Man. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting episode of Handhelds Around the World, the show where I go around the world sampling many of the classic games and systems the portable world has to offer. Today's episode was recorded in the Transylvanian town of Brasov, on the very same trip where I reviewed every single handheld Castlevania game on Nintendo platforms at Dracula's Castle. This Romanian city, located in the central mountain region of the country, is about 236 miles from the Black Sea. In 1235 AD, this place was referred to by German colonists as Corona, a Latin word meaning crown, which is the perfect name to be fair to describe this place, as this is one of the most visually stunning and beautiful towns I have ever been to. The quality of Eastern Europe continues to surprise me. Speaking of things that are often overlooked, today we are going to be looking at a game from the Ghosts and Goblins series, which I would gather the majority of people have never heard of. This series actually contains a lot more entries than I think many people would realise. So before we get into the meat of this video and look at the game in question, let's take a quick look at some of the entries within the Ghost and Goblins franchise. The first entry of the series existed in a ridiculous amount of forms and you could play the game in the arcade, on the NES, the Commodore 64 the ZX Spectrum, the Amstrad CPC 464, the Amiga, and many more. There are so many variants of this frustratingly difficult, yet extremely addictive game. The game's 1988 sequel, Ghouls and Ghosts, was even better than the original, and for that reason was also ported to a ridiculous amount of different gaming platforms in its own right. The third side-scrolling platformer released in 1991, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, was developed exclusively for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System in 1991, and yet again this game surpassed its predecessors too. As time passed, this game has also seen a number of ports to various other platforms as well. Now, after the original three games, I suppose it gets a little more confusing. You have the spin-off series starring Firebrand, known as Demon Crest, which has game entries spread across their NES, Super Nintendo and Game Boy. And you have a 3D hack and slash series of games too, known as Maximo, on the PlayStation 2. The series entry in 2006, Ultimate Ghouls and Ghosts on the PlayStation Portable, is arguably the best game in the entire series. It is the first game in the series to employ 3D graphics, while maintaining much of the 2D gameplay mechanics of the earlier games. Today, this handheld game is pretty obscure in its own right, however today, we are going to go one step further with today's video and look at an even more overlooked handheld entry. One more quick mention though, before we get to that, is there are also a number of Ghosts and Goblins related iOS and mobile games in existence too. But you can completely forget about me talking about any of those, because I am not interested in covering absolute tripe like that on my channel. On my channel we look at real games and handheld systems, so today we will be looking at Meikomura, if I'm pronouncing that right because I'm not really good at um, the Japanese words, for the Wonder Swan, which translates as Demon World Village. This version of the game is an exclusive version for the Wonder Swan. 
Why would I label this as the most obscure Ghosts and Goblins game you may ask? Simply because it seems the majority of people out there, outside of the most hardcore of hardcore gamers, do not even seem to know the Bandai Wonderswan itself exists. I have not talked about the Wonderswan myself on this channel in any detail, since I was in Thailand earlier this year, when we looked at the system in detail in one video, and on another, we looked at the classic Mega Man game, which is exclusive to the Wonderswan. So this is the third video so far on this channel, focusing on something Wonderswan related, an underrated handheld designed by Gunpei Yokoi, the same man who brought to us the Game Boy, the Game & Watch devices, Metroid and Kid Isaurus. <laughs> the story of this game starts off somewhat less sexily than with other entries in the series, Rather than the main character Arthur and his lady love who we call um, Princess who were previously lounging around in their undergarments in a public graveyard in the middle of the night. Ooh. The Princess this time is hanging around close to an overpopulated graveyard but this time under a large tree when Arthur shows up and whispers sweet nothings into her ear. After selecting a new game however, two demons with very detailed buttocks show up kidnapping the princess and relieving Arthur of both his clothes and his consciousness. Maybe these two demons are actually Harvey Weinstein and Kevin Spacey as in-game characters in disguise. But hey, that's just a theory, a game theory. Thanks for watching. Oh, and Matt Pack, please don't plagiarise my work again. It could have been a coincidence, I suppose. Well, anyway, Arthur then wakes up in his undergarments and charges off to rescue the princess. I assume he probably had to guess where to start looking first, as he was definitely out cold. Tally ho then. The first thing I noticed playing this game, apart from him suddenly getting his clothes back, is that it handled rather well and was considerably easier to play than the other entries in the series. Though I will point out that the double jump function is missing. You begin the level much in the same way as when you start many other Ghosts and Ghouls or Ghouls and Goblins or Ghouls and, Ghouls and whatever games. But there are less enemies on the screen, perhaps due to the Wonder Swan's limitations. But if anything, we all know these games are too difficult anyway. So this is welcomed really. The most pleasant surprise is the fact that this is a completely different game to the others. It is an entirely standalone game with new enemy sprites, stages, graphics and music. Normally with handheld gaming, companies often get lazy and simply release subpar versions of console counterparts. But this isn't the case at all with this Wonderswan game. In some ways, this simple monochrome game controls and plays better than even Super Ghouls and Ghosts, a game revered by many as being the best in the entire series. The levels are varied and look brilliant. They also merge very well from one to the next. Basically, the scenery changes in quite a logical manner as you move across the world. On the first level, you start in the graveyard and make your way through a haunted village where you encounter the first boss, Frankenzombie. He spits vomit projectiles at you, which seem to have some gross life of their own, which you need to avoid while simultaneously trying to hit his head with your never-ending supply of mystical lances. That's very convenient, isn't it? The hit area, however, is irritatingly small. You have to aim for his hair for some reason, because apparently the rest of his body is made of ectoplasm or something, so the lance passes straight through it. However, once you grasp how to do it, he's very easily vanquished. You can then collect some random key from nowhere, which conveniently opens the gate to the castle grounds to your right. Once you make it through to the next area, you meet another boss, quite literally the castle you had just made your way through. I personally thought this was great. What an imaginative boss. I mean, if you had a security system like that, you'd never need to worry about burglars if the building itself literally attacked them. Generally, all the bosses in this game are varied for the most part. Though there are two, which are essentially just, um, dragons. Something else which is unique to this version of the game is the fact that it utilises the Wonder Swan's ability to be played as either a portrait or a landscape screen, 
You get to a point just before halfway through the game where the path forks and your journey requires you to go potholing down a hellish tunnel of doom. You physically have to hold the Wonder Swan on its side. I like this because rather than just sticking to the same formula this series has in all the other games, this version adapts and utilises all aspects of the hardware it's on. The levels all look great, all look spooky like they should, and thankfully this game doesn't even troll you like the original version of this game does, by making you go through the whole experience over again. You don't have to do the same thing twice to get the good ending this time. In relation to the graphics, the game is pretty sharp and striking for a monochrome game. Everything about it looks and feels more fluid than what you'd get from an original Game Boy experience. It's a shame really that this game never got a revised remake on the Wonderswan colour, as the dull greyness is this platformer's only weakness aesthetically. The audio on the other hand is a completely different kettle of fish. Whilst I can tolerate some of the music, Parts of the soundtrack in this game are absolutely horrific, just like the game's difficulty in other countries in the series. Some tracks are literally assaults on your ears and sound like they're generated by cheap electric organs which are malfunctioning somewhat. In fact, some of this is so terrible it could even be compared to the sounds of Stevie Wonder answering the iron. Music aside though, this game is a fun romp for a spooky wasteland and one of the best Ghosts and Goblins games I've ever played. In fact, this may be one of the best games I have played on the Wonderswan platform full stop. An absolutely fantastic little hidden gem. Overall, it is a crying shame the Wonderswan never saw a release outside of Japan, because there is a decent handful of games out there in which we should all be experiencing. Thank you for watching today's video. As usual, I hope you learned something new, and if you haven't got round to it yet, I urge you to give the Wonderswan a try. It is a fun, often overlooked little handheld. Which Wonderswan games would you like to see me feature in depth on this channel, and what is your favourite game within the Ghosts and Goblins series? Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and to check out some of the hundreds of other videos on this channel. I have been producing in-depth content like this every week for nearly two years now. Shout out to Shizuka Kabayashi, Brad Warren, David Mountford, Andrew Bazanski, Atanas Garcia, Edward O'Reilly, Peter Dawn, Retail Archaeology and all of my other patrons. Thank you for all of your support. If you want to be added to this prestigious list of people, then check out my Patreon page. It would help the channel to no end. Ta-ta and farewell.